So we just learned how we can define a coordinate system and define the position and orientation of a robot therein. But what about if you're interested in things that happen locally to the robot? So what we can do is we can put another coordinate system on top of the robot, which would be having an x-axis again, um, a z-axis, and a y-axis. I can do the same for the quad rotor if you wish. But now what I've done is I labeled every vector here with this index R, which denotes that we're talking about the robot frame. And so consistently I will also label my inertial frame with the letter I. And I put the I here to denote that this is the inertial frame. Now the question is, how can I express the orientation of the red coordinate system with respect to the inertial frame? So there are many ways to do that, and the best is to just start very straightforwardly by saying that these vectors I just drawn are basis vectors that span a coordinate system and have length 1. So these are unit vectors, so xr's length is 1, zr's length is 1, and yr's length is 1. So you will see that the math uh, becomes much easier this way. And in order to move forward, I think we should choose a simpler representation which requires us to draw the coordinate systems on top of So let's do this. Let's redraw the inertia frame. And now for simplicity, let's forget about the z-axis and just try draw a 2D coordinate system with an x or and a y-axis. And now let's draw the robot coordinate system which has also an x-axis and a y-axis, but is simply rotated around the other coordinate system. And actually, it is rotating around the z-axis, which I haven't drawn. Now, to be consistent, let's put indices here to denote which coordinate system each vector belongs to. Now, in order to define the orientation of the robot, I can just give you those red vectors and tell you exactly where they are with respect to the coordinate system I. And you could draw that and you could see how the robot is oriented. So let's do that real quick. For that, we need to define uh, some kind of angle between them. So let's say there's an angle alpha between the two x-axes. And now you have a triangle, which has a right angle here. And you can write down the relationships of cosine of alpha is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, which is of length 1, because these are actually unit vectors. So xr is 1. And sine alpha is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, which is 1 also. Now, I can say that the vector xr expressed in the coordinate system i, so I put a superscript i in front of it, equals cosine of alpha, that's the x coordinate here, which was the adjacent, sine alpha, and now 0 because they are actually coincident uh, on the z-axis. So the derivation I just showed is something that always works, but what did I actually do here? So if you remind yourself of the definition of the scalar product, let me write that down, the scalar product in linear algebra is if you have the vector a times the vector b, and I'm actually using a dot to denote the scalar product, you get a times b, so the length of a times the length of b times cosine of alpha, which is the angle between alpha and beta. So I take any vector a and b, they always have some kind of angle between them, and I calculate their scalar product in any dimension I want, and this is what I get. I get some notion of the angle. Now, if you look at this, what we actually have done here is the first entry here, cosine of alpha, is actually xr, scalar product with, of xr with xi, the second entry is xr multiplied with yi. And this third entry is xr multiplied with zi. 
Now let's verify this real quick. We have xr times xi, which is this vector here and this vector here, and the angle between them is alpha, so that is just cosine on alpha alpha. The second entry is xr multiplied with yi, and there's an angle here, which is actually 90 minus alpha, and so cosine of 90 minus alpha is just sinus of alpha, so we are correct here. And now the third entry is xr multiplied with zi, which I now draw, just that you see it. It's somewhere around here. And what actually happens here is because we just rotated around the z-axis, the angle between those two is still 90 degrees. And now not only is the cosine of 90 degrees zero, but we also know that the scalar product of two orthogonal vectors is zero. I can now do this for all the principal axes of the robot coordinate system and express them in the coordinate system i. So I do this for y, for yr expressed in the coordinate system i, which is yr projected onto xi, yr projected onto yi and yr projected onto zi and now finally I do this for the robot z-axis expressed in the corner system i which is zr projected onto xi zr projected onto yi and ZR projected onto ZI. Now you can see that this is a much easier way of doing things than looking at the actual angles between all these different coordinate systems. And if you actually have the values that define your coordinate uh, systems, you can calculate the scalar product and you will come up with exactly the same values than you would if you would do it manually. So let's do this real quick. So let's recall. We had in this uh, first vector, we had cosine of alpha, sine of alpha, and zero. Now let's look at the second vector, which is the scalar product of yr with xi. Now again, we have um, the same angle alpha here, and the angle uh, between yr and xi is actually alpha plus 90 degrees. So uh, again, we can use the way the cosine shifts. And let's draw that real quick. This is cosine, and this is sine. And now this goes the other way around. And now before, we had plus, when we shift cosine into this direction, it was the sinus. Now it's minus sinus. So we have minus sinus alpha. We look at the second entry, which is yr divided by yi, which is these two vectors here. And they share the angle alpha, so it's cosine of alpha. Then we look at yr and zi. They are also orthogonal, so we put a zero here. And now we look at the third vector, which is zr with xi, well, they're orthogonal, the second entry is orthogonal too, and the last entry, which I cannot read here anymore, which is probably zi, these are parallel, so we have a 1 here. Now, what I just did is I took those three vectors and put them into a matrix form, and what we call this matrix is actually a rotation matrix, R, which rotates from the robot coordinate frame into the inertial frame. So we put a subscript R and a subscript I.